In this video, we're going to cover how to tell whether two triangles are congruent or not. And remember, congruent just means exactly the same as shape and size. So congruent triangles need to have the same shape and size, but they might have different orientations. For example, they could be rotated versions of each other, like these two, or reflected versions of each other, like these ones. So if we were given these two triangles, these ones would be considered congruent because they're both exactly the same shape and size. In fact, here, these ones even have the same orientation, which makes them look completely identical. It's unlikely you'll get this sort of example in the exam where the two are completely the same orientation, but it is possible and they still count as congruent. On the other hand, if we had these two triangles, these ones aren't congruent because they're completely different shapes and sizes. Now, instead of just looking at a pair of triangles and trying to see if they look the same or not, we instead need to see if the two triangles fulfill one of these four rules. In all of these rules, the S's stand for side, A stands for angle, R stands for right angle, and H stands for hypotenuse. So if we start with SSS, the SSS stands for side, side, side. And all it means is that if all three sides of both triangles are the same length, then those triangles must be congruent to each other. So if we take these two triangles here, we can tell that these must be congruent because they both have a 5 cm side, a 7 cm side, and a 9 cm side. It doesn't matter how they're arranged or what orientation the triangles are in, as long as all three sides are the same length, they'll be congruent. The next rule, SAS, stands for side, angle, side. And importantly, because the A is in the middle, it's referring to the angle in between the two sides. So in these two triangles, because these two sides of each triangle are the same length, and the angles between those two sides are the same size, these two triangles must be congruent. Whereas if we were given this angle over here instead, even if the angles were the same size like they are here, it still wouldn't count as proof that the triangles are congruent, because the angle is no longer in between the two same length sides, and so it doesn't fulfill our criteria of side, angle, side. Of course, these two triangles may well still be congruent, it's just that we can't prove it using this particular rule. So just remember that for this rule, you need two sides that are the same length, and the angle in between them has to be the same size. Next up, we have the AAS rule, which stands for angle, angle, side. So for this rule, you need two of the angles and one of the sides to be the same. The important bit though is that for the two triangles to be congruent, the sides have to be in the same place relative to the angles. To see what I mean by this, have a look at these two triangles here. In both cases, the triangles have two angles that are the same size and a side that's the same length. The important bit though is that the three centimeter sides are both opposite the 100 degree angle. So the side that's the same length for both triangles is in the same place relative to the angles. So this means that they fulfill the AAS rule and count as congruent. In contrast, if you look at this triangle here, the three centimeter side is no longer opposite the 100 degree angle. Instead, it's in between the two angles. So because it's in a different place relative to the angles, it doesn't count as congruent to our original two triangles. This rule can sometimes be a little bit confusing, so let's try another example, where we have similar triangles, but we're told that these sides are 4 centimeters instead. In this case, because the 4 centimeter sides are in between the same two angles, these two would fulfill the criteria and count as congruent. The very last rule is the RHS rule, which stands for right angle, hypotenuse, and side. 
So this rule is specifically for right angled triangles. And all you need to show is that the hypotenuses and one other side are the same length in both triangles. So looking at these two, these are both right angled triangles because of the little squares in the corner. They both have hypotenuses of 7 cm, and one other side in each is 3.6 cm. So these two must be congruent. Anyway, that's everything for congruent triangles. So hope that all made sense. If you want to practice any of this, or anything else in science, maths, or any other subject, you can find past papers and loads of exam questions by topic at our resource site, which you can find by just clicking the link in the top right corner of this screen.